Hey, what's up guys? My name is Echerno. Welcome to episode 25 of Game Programming. So yesterday we took a look at the basic overview of the level class and today we're going to take a, take a look at the overview of the random generation of a level. This is again going to be a very simple random generation just to give you guys an idea. Again, there are a lot of people out there who have no idea how random generation even works. We're not going to talk about stuff like noise mapping right now, okay? That's just, that's very advanced random generation that we might actually cover in the future, but certainly not now. Um, but just a basic overview of how random generation is going to work. So at the moment, we've set up this little public level thing, which is basically like a random generation constructor, right? Because this is the constructor where we actually load a level from a file. This is the constructor in which we actually generate a random level. So you can see what it does is it, is it actually specif it, it, it inputs these variables as to the width and height of how big we actually want the random uh, randomly generated level. And then of course it sets this int here called tiles as integer, this uh, array of integers called tiles equal to a new int, equal to um, the amount of index. It basically sets the size of the array to the size of um, <clears throat> the map, therefore setting this array to contain an one index or one, one integer for every tile on the map. And that integer is gonna specify what type of tile it is. So if we go down here into our private void generate level, what we're actually gonna talk about is how random generation will work. Um, and again, what we could do, uh, in fact, what we will do right now is actually make a new class called random level, all right? And random level is going to extend level. All right, what that means is that suddenly it's it's extending it right it's inheriting all this and i'll show you guys how that roughly works in just a minute first of all we see straight away that we've we're extending level and we actually get an error right our error over here is that implicit okay i'll just show it up here actually um that there's a super constructor for it uh it's under so there's no def there's no default constructor if we actually go in here and simply put public level, which is the default constructor, you'll see that this error goes away. But because we don't have a default constructor, you can see that here we've actually got parameters. We actually need to use one of these constructors over here. So obviously the constructor that I'm gonna use here is the int int one, right? I wanna use this one because this is the actual one. If we go into here, we see that the one with int width and int height is the one that actually generates our level. So we, we've, we've called that up now, right? So it runs, what this does again, what super means is that whatever, whatever parameters we input here is basically going to input back into here, into these two and run this constructor, okay? So the word super refers to the extending constructor to the super classes constructor. And it will again, execute all the code that is in that constructor. So we see the generate level is there. Now, if we come in here and we type private void generate level, right? You'll see that first of all, this is a completely different method, right? Because it's, it's, it's extending it, right? Because, sorry, because, um, because it's private. Now, if we set this to protected and likewise this to protected, you'll see that suddenly Eclipse gives us this little green arrow, which says it overrides the level.generate level method, right? What this means is whatever code we actually put in here, it will actually execute when we run this method, right? So it overrides it. So in other words, if this method is run and the type that we specify to be is random level, then whatever's here will run. So this is where we're actually gonna put up all that code, which actually generates our random level. Um, if we actually come in here, you see that everything is private, we'll just set that equal to protected. Sorry, we won't set it equal to protected, we'll change it to protected. If I can spell, protected. <laughs> um, and tiles as well, all right? Um, originally I made it private because I was gonna actually do all of it in here, but I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna make different classes for this because it's more organized that way. Um, and so what we can do here in this protected void generate level is say that for in i, sorry, for in y equals zero, y is actually less than the amount of tiles from the height. So in other words, y is less than height. 
Y plus plus, and again, a nested for loop. So inside that, um, for int X equals zero, X is less than width. So X is less than our level width, X plus plus, right? We're actually gonna set, we're actually gonna make a new um, random object here. So private random random equals new random, and we'll actually make it final as well. And again, we can import that. And what the random class allows us to do is randomly generate numbers or booleans, all right? So in other words, we wanna randomly generate a number because what, what we're doing here, right, is we're, we've got an array of integers called tiles. And in that array, what's happening in that array is it obviously it contains numbers. That's what it, it contains integers. That's what it contains. So each integer is actually going to be an ID for a tile. So in other words, ID zero might be grass. ID one might be a stone. Uh, two might be wood. And three, for example, might be, um, I don't know, water. Okay. So over here, we actually need to fill this tile array with values, of course, because at the moment it doesn't have a value to it. So what that means is that it's, it's empty. It's got, it's, it's empty. We actually need to give it values. I think the default value though will be zero because that's the, that's the default value of an integer. But we obviously want to randomly fill it with, with tiles. So the way we do that is again, this, this, these for loops exist to cycle through every index in that tile, ensuring that we actually fill it completely. And what, what we're gonna do here is simply put tiles, x plus y times width, and you've, you've seen this before, you remember how that works, hopefully. If not, you can rewatch a previous episode because I explained that. Um, equals random dot next int. And now this parameter here is, is how many numbers we wanna generate. Actually, no, I shouldn't, I shouldn't say it like that. It's the range of numbers that we wanna generate. So if we put four here, it's gonna generate um, out of four numbers. So it's either gonna give us zero, one, two, or three, all right? Zero, one, two, and three, that's four values. It's gonna give us four different, up to four different values. If we leave it blank, it's just gonna give us freaking any number, pretty much. Um, and if we put it to something like, I don't know, eight, for example, it's gonna give us a random number anywhere from zero to seven, all right? So zero to four, zero to three, sorry, will be, will be good. And what this code again is gonna do is it's gonna it's actually gonna just give it a random um, number. So therefore a random, ID, a random tile ID. And that is therefore going to, you know, place a random tile somewhere in the level. Now you might be thinking, why on earth would you put this in two for loops instead of actually doing something like that? Because again, this would also work if I did something like tiles.length and then again, pretty much copied this code here and replaced this with I. That would actually probably give you the same result. Now, the reason I did it this way is because when we actually get into some more advanced uh, tile generations um, and random generations, we wanna be able to control specific tiles, not just all in one go. All right, so for example, I might wanna say that um, the tile at coordinate 10 X and eight Y might be uh, water, which is three, for example. All right, that's sort of why I wanna be able to control this way. But yeah, anyway, that's how ran random generation is gonna work. Next time, we're probably gonna go into actually rendering it, um, into rendering, you know, this random level that we've created here uh, and correctly calling it, of course, correctly instantiating and actually generating this level. Um, as well as, you know, rendering to the screen, maybe making a few more tiles in paint.net. They're ready to go. But um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this episode of 3D Game Pro... Oh, not 3D Game Programming, my bad. Hope you enjoyed this episode of Game Programming. Speaking of 3D Game Programming, that will be back shortly, all right? That'll be back as soon as I have time. I'm actually working on something bigger right now as well, so I'm kind of busy. But 3D Game Programming will be back. Uh, game Programming, though. Hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please hit the like button, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Later, guys. Bye. Bye.